This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build an online presence and run your business. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Games Workshop has some of the coolest, most interesting lore in the gaming sphere. Yet somehow, a lot of their models are... derpy. But here's the thing, I want to like Warhammer miniatures. So today I'm taking three of the worst modern Warhammer miniatures and through the use of an AI creating lore accurate miniatures that live up to the grim dark future of Games Workshop. We're going to start with a classic, The Fiends of Slanesh. Here is the official description. These creatures combine the traits of a scorpion a human, and a reptile in the sleek form of an unholy abomination. From the front of the lithe body grows a humanoid torso covered in a row of breasts and a pair of arms, ending in a broad stinger tail that drips with venom. Its emerald alien eyes perch on either side of its head, rolling about in its skull. But unfortunately, to me they look like Derpy purple ant eaters who are into bondage. Or maybe kinky gazelles with hair extensions? I just have a really hard time taking these things seriously. But either way, let's shorten that description a little bit and then put it into Mid Journey. Fiend of Slanesh, bear humanoid torso. Oh, you can't use the word breasts on Mid Journey. Okay. We'll work around it. Before I put this text into Mid Journey, I first need to prime the AI to use the previous models as a reference. I can do that by uploading one of the models to AI, and then I can plug that into my text prompt. That's, that's a creature all right. These absolutely look like the type of creatures that I would expect to come from Slanesh. They are weird and actually kind of sexy, but also just super disgusting. Unfortunately, they are far too human for what I am going for. So let's try that one more time. Oh my god, how did it- Oh god, for some reason I was not expecting it to get worse. Okay, the one on the upper right has the most lizard-like head, so we're gonna go with that one. This thing is amazing. I would absolutely paint something that looks like this. This is what the model should absolutely look like. I will never be able to look at this model again and not be disappointed. Before we continue, let's take a minute to talk about Squarespace. I find it so exciting that people want to wear my merch and through the Squarespace print on demand feature, I can create a cool website and sell my merch with ease. Linking to one of their outside vendors was simple and my storefront looks great. I also love how easy it is to connect to my social media so people can keep up with whatever I'm doing. If you want to make your own website, start selling your own products or whatever else you can think of, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash lilamev and use code lilamev for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, back to painting. All right, let's talk about a personal favorite of mine, Luca Vi, the mother of nightmares from Soulblight Grave Lords. I did a kit bash on this model a year ago that you can watch here. Let's see what her lore has to say. Standing tall over the battlefield is a bestial mixture of bat fiend, drake, and vampire. Valka Vi strikes down would-be challenges with ease befitting a noble knight and vampire queen. I want to like her so much. She's a vampire. It's a badass woman. And it's a big model, which was one of my favorite kinds of models to paint. However, to me, it looks like the designers 
totally forgot that they had a meeting that afternoon with their boss, took two unfinished concept arts, glued them together, and just hoped that no one would say anything. And somehow, it got approved. But let's type up everything we need in mid-journey. Female knight holding a sword, mixture of vampire, drake, and bat, soul blight, grave lord. Hmm. They're cool. I don't get monstrous bat, drake, any of that stuff. Uh, let's try it again. Okay, this time around, I'm going to focus more on her monstrous features. They're all really cool. They're cool, they're great. None of them are what I was hoping to get, uh, but we'll, we're, we're just gonna pick one. Okay, you know, I wish you didn't have like such obvious sexy armor. It's a bit disheartening to see that just because I put in female, they automatically made her sexy, but that's a different story. Um, but I think that this is a way cooler model that I would definitely paint. I don't really think that it fulfills the prompt, but it's really cool. I love the two deformed bat wings. She's got weapons. The armor is cool. Love the like bat hair is pretty awesome. And I love the idea that she's being supported by this cape. Similar to Eidolon of Mathlan. So really cool. Not what I wanted, but really, really cool. Lastly, let's talk about one more classic, terrible Warhammer model, Jean Steelers from the Tyranid Army. Here is the official description. Jean Steelers are characterized by their six limbs and resilient, armored carapace. The creatures are bipedal and move with lightning speed on their reverse-jointed lower limbs. The upper sets of limbs are distinctly different, the foremost pair ending in razor-sharp claws and the secondary limbs ending in gnarled hands. Now, not all Gene Stealer models are stupid. I specifically mean the Gene Stealer's brood models. What in the... This is just the most comical looking model ever. This is what I would imagine a crab would look like if you removed the shell and the white and red flesh somehow gained sentience and a thirst for blood. Anyway, let's simplify this description. What in the... that is... Why does it look like the Gene Stealers are wearing Space Marine armor? Like, did it look from my reference photo at all for this? We'll just take 40k out of the description for this and try again. I don't even... like, when we look at this one, like, it's... I don't even, like, what, what is, th what is this? What is this? It's got, it's legs aren't attached. I'm doing this one more time and then I'm, I'm done. I don't know. I can't believe that I'm freaking brain fried from an AI, but. <laughs> I put in reptilian face into the description. Honestly, it's closer. <laughs> I'm gonna do a variations of this fourth one. I think that at least it captures the like alien aspect of these creatures a lot more. This one looks like a fucking puppet. Like this is the arm. This one looks like a baby lizard. And then that looks like a fucking goblin. Okay. 
It's monster, all right. Um. <laughs> my goal was for it to look less derpy, and I feel like <laughs> it just looks derpy in a different way. <laughs> You know what? It doesn't look like crab meat that gains sentience. Um, that's about all that I can say for it. If this ran at me, I would be terrified. Its eyeballs look like they're going to explode out of its head. Its claws look like vegetables, like beets, and I, you know, it looks fast! It looks fast. I definitely don't want it to kiss me. I'm not sure if it's better than the original, but it is different. Out of all of these recreations, the Fiends of Slanash are hands down the best ones. I think that they are elegant looking and terrifying. And I think that they've really captured what Games Workshop wanted them to be and just really brought the descriptions, the essence of the character to life. I think that the worst one is also, hands down, the Gene Stealers. I just could not get the AI to do what I wanted it to do. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with my opinions on what models are the worst? Do you like my recreations? If you go and you create any Games Workshop characters using the AI generator, put them on Instagram, tag me, I would love to see them. If you like this sort of video and you want to see me kitbash AI generated Space Marine, then you should check out this video here. You know the drill, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much. Go support me on Patreon. I am so tired. I'll see you next time.